Hello, hello, hello. Ooh, let's, uh, let's take one out. There we go. A little bit better, not a lot. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to do a long flight. Well, not a long one, uh, but I'm going to do it as a split. So we'll do the takeoff and climb, and then there'll be a jump cut, and we'll go to the uh, to the landing. As you can see at the bottom of screen, you can see CYYZ to EGLL. So that is Toronto Pearson in Canada, Kentuckistan, uh, down to Heathrow in London Town. Um, and you might recognize this from the previous videos. Yes, we are in the Boeing 788, so 787 800 Dreamliner. Um, yeah, why not? I am sort of growing a small liking to this aircraft, not huge, not huge, but um, certainly a small liking. Um, now that it's all sort of bug fixed and whatnot, um, so yeah, let, let's let's have a play. Why not? Um, so I've done the PFPX side of things. That's all uh, all done, and uh, the flight planning side of things. Um, and I've literally just loaded up FSX and not not done anything else. So we can go through all of this uh, together. Um, so we'll tick off some of these uh, bits and bobs. We'll put the parking brake on. Well, wow, that's a smidge loud. Let's crank that volume down a wee bit. And I'll be doing it. Uh, pause it in it. So we're at C Y Y Z. Charlie Yankee Yankee Zulu, if you prefer. And we're at gate one. I haven't got scenery for Toronto, unfortunately. Uh, we're at gate one three five, which I think you've got a key in as S one three five. Nope. Just one three five. Yes, just one three five. Fantastic. Um, so that's not a pause in it done. Oh, and it's reset everything to flipping pounds and nonsense. Kilograms, degrees C, please. Thank you. Um, so if I just fire at PFPX here. I can see that our fuel is 35.8 tonnes, that's correct. So that's all been done through the Quality Wings Dispatcher. Our zero fuel weight is lower than it would be. It could be 151.4. I'm going to key in what PFPX thinks. Um, now, I never know whether that gets added onto that or whether this is a sub of this, but 2.1 tons of reserves anyway. Let's key it in. Uh, cruise altitude is going to be flight level 390. If, have we got a step climb? We probably have. No, we do not. Straight up to 390, and there we shall lay. Cost index I've done a zero. Um, Reasonably typical for BA uh, for a long flight. I don't know if it's actually what they fly. Um, pass. No, they don't know the answer to that. Um, our weather. Goes in the active sky. I is not seeing it. Am I not loaded up active sky? Hang on. Thought I had. Nope, apparently I have not. Uh, so our current winds are, I just load the flight plan into here. Um, conditions, here we go. Zero degrees, three knots. Nice and calm then. I'm going to leave that as default. Uh, it's, it's almost certainly wrong. Uh, transition. Don't actually know. I'm just going to blindly key that in, but I may as well check. Uh, standard instrument departure. What's our first waypoint? Our first waypoint. Oh, we're on the Verdo 6. So I can just pull that up 
and transition is oh it's it's eighteen thousand. So right, that can stay as it is then. Uh, and that's fine, and no step climb. Lovely. So we can request our route. Oh, and it's right top of the list. That's very good. We are B, uh, B A. Good question. I don't know what our call sign is. But we are B A. Where is it? Oh, Charlie Alpha, I know that, but what's our flight number? I'm looking at this and I'm not seeing it. So let's just tab out to BAV. Double oh nine two. B A double oh nine. Oh. Not that it makes the blind bit of difference, but probably just goes on a log file somewhere. Um, runway. So I'm going to have to have a look at this on flight radar. If they've even got anything flying at the moment. This this whole plan of using flight radar sort of falls flat when everyone's in lockdown. Um, so we've got... There's Montreal. There's Toronto. And there's a guy who looks like he's just taken off from runway about 10. So, right, tell the light at the wrong airport. Airport, I'm looking at um, the other one in Toronto. Come on, can I find someone who's just come out of Toronto? My chuff. Well, this guy looks like he's coming in. On left, 020 left, or there or thereabouts. Uh, so we'll do departure. Zero five, is it that far? Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. Um, so it's going to be five. No, six left. I'm going to go with. And we're going to be on the Verdo six departure. Verdo 6 departure and our transition is going to be either L sub Iptos or Lorca. Yep, that coincides with Nya. Let's have a look at the waypoints. Lorca. So with the Lorca transition. Activate X. Sweet. Now, why have we not got the ND over there? I suppose we probably want to put some power in for our batteries, cheese it. And we'll put some lights on. There we go, power, power coming in, and there's the ND. Smash in. Now, straight away, I can see an issue here, and we've got a discontinuity. So, let's have a look at the chart. We depart on a heading 057 and then turn straight to Alcott. 
Okay, right, so we can pretty much do a direct then. Um, so that's fine. Oh, and it's got it as a direct. So why have we got a discontinuity there? Well, we'll hand fly it, be right. Be alright on the night. So that's all in. So I'll take off. That's all in. We'll switch over to the other side then. Uh, do it now every time. Performance. We'll copy the FMC data. Condition is dry. Yeah. Uh, outside air temperature. Is it actually zero degrees in Canada? I suppose it probably is. It's a silly place. Zero degrees, dew point minus two. Yeah. Uh, Takeoff weight. Now, PFPX reckons. Oh, that one. That one. Uh, our takeoff weight will be 18.7 tons. Near, yeah, about, yeah, near enough. That's, that's good enough. Uh, and we'll do optimum for that. QNH is a whopping 1014. And then we'll do calc. So V speeds one four three one four three one five zero. Uh cell temp of forty one degrees, which is seventy three percent. That's pretty nice. That that should be a nice uh nice gentle takeoff then. So we'll copy that over and then we'll swing it around, we'll accept that straight in. And do we not need to accept that? Apparently not. So that is everything done on that side of things. So 390 is going to be our initial, uh, no, our initial climb will be, we've got to be above 1000. Before we start our turn and then it looks like we're on free height. So we'll go straight up to 390. Um, so our climb out heading, our initial heading is 057. That's just straight off the chart. 057. And uh, we won't hang about, we'll get straight up to uh, 250 knots. Fly directors can come on before I forget them. That can go to map, that is fine. Uh, we will be in inches, but just to key the number in first of all, um, in fact, no, I can get inches of mercury off. Two, nine, and nine are three. So down here, so we'll flick back to inches of mercury, and two, nine, and nine are three. Champion. Good stuff. So that's that all done. So fuel control switches need to be on cut off. And then the co-pilot's gonna kick in, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, this is your captain. We'd like to add our one more board today's flight. We're just finishing up our last season for our monster. Oh, bought it. We're going to be doing a few more of our flights today. We're going to be doing a few more of our flights today. Oops. A poo can come on. So we'll wait for a poo to come on. Just going to get the sit up on that. Fantastic. Still waiting on a poo. Uh, but we can turn our nav lights on because we're going to be doing a start fairly shortly. Uh, and 
I suppose we probably want to look out the window. The poo is on, so we can disconnect external power. We'll put some lighting on. Uh, let's go for a nice blue. Yeah, why not? Um, and then I can just get rid of that. We don't need that now. So that's on. That's fine. All good on there. Um, and we are now burning fuel. Okay, so which way do we want to push? Um, well, it looks like we're going to be taxiing out that way, so push back tail left. So, because I haven't got GSX or anything, that is P followed by 1. Hey! Hey! And back, back we go. Okay, so and we can do a dual engine start. Up comes the N2. Fuel can go in. There is a specific point where you're supposed to put them in, but I can remember it. So, both engines are on before taxi checklist. Anti-ice, we will be turning that on. In fact, I think it's on auto. APU can come off. Uh, Anti-ice is set to auto. Taxi light can come on. Transponder can go to TA, I think they use TARA on the ground, so actually we'll put it on TARA. So anti ice recall needs to be checked, fuel low center, that's fine, we haven't got much in the center. RTO on the auto brake, flight controls full left, full right, neutral, full up, full down, neutral, rudder, full left, full right. Neutral and ground equipment is clear. Flaps will be taking a flat five. Oops, so flat five can come down. And we can start our taxi. Oh, this thing just wants to go. Yeah, every time. So, brake check. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, brakes are good. Get ourselves out and away. This thing just wants to get away from you.
So we all do we? Hope you're all well, surviving the lockdown. to uh, oil up my rudder pedals. I hope you can't hear that, they're very sticky. So it shouldn't be a long taxi, swinging a right shortly and this is the uh, the runway we'll be going off that is literally just on the nose here. Yeah, no scenery for here unfortunately. Just bring the speed back for the turn. I don't do many long haul flights, that's why I've never really bothered getting scenery for anywhere far afield. But, uh, might as well make the most of the whole lockdown thing and, uh, and do a few. Get the old hours up. This is a BA flight, so I'm, uh, I can log these, this flight, which is nice. And we can do a before takeoff checklist. So flaps are set. Um, lights will come on momentarily. I'll just wait till we get around the corner, really, for for that one. Uh, and the same with the strobes. So actually, yeah, not a huge amount to do right right now. Still, still don't particularly like the uh, the head-up display, but we'll use it for low level when we're hand flying. It's handy, I suppose. Flight attendants, please be seated for departure. Yeah. Ping. Okay. So strobe coming on, lights are all on, transponder's already set which is good, just got the one warning for low fuel in the centre, well that's fine uh, and deliberate, most of the fuel is, uh, is in the wings, which is what you want, stop the wings bending up too too much. Yeah, absolutely no wind. Which you do want a bit of wind as long as it's on the nose. So it means your ground speed is lower when you take off. So, yeah, it shouldn't be any traffic, so nothing to worry about on that side of things. Just need to line up and hit the go button. And I'll try my best to do some outside shots, but uh, it's quite hard tracking true on the runway. I 
Right about there is good. Oh, that noise. Oh, look at the uh, look at the effects there. That looks really cool. Hey, not to tail strike. There we go. This is really hard flying like this. I'm seeing exactly what you're seeing, so. So round to zero five seven. In fact, we yeah, we're fine. We're well clear. So we can go straight out towards uh, the first waypoint. There we go. Most coordinated turn, took my feet off the pedals far too early there. Oh, I miss auto trim. So, taxi lights can come off. Gear up, flaps up. to see unfortunately. There's Alka, our first uh, waypoint. So not flown in a particularly straight line to get there but good enough. Just try and get a bit of trim going, that'd be nice. That is beautiful. B E A U T F O. Thanks, Mike. So I want to go direct to Alka. How do you do a direct in this? There we go, that's what I wanted to do. So is the flight director going to sort itself out? Yes it is. Now we're not a million miles off what the flight director wants, so we can put the autopilot on with LNAV and VNAV. Up to flight level 390, above 10,000, so lights away. HUD can go up, don't need that now. And that was a rather chilled out and uneventful takeoff. Which is sort of what you 
you want, really. Big long set, huge long set. I've got weather on. Yes, I have. Yeah. It's just nothing, uh, nothing exciting. Well, isn't that very chill? Um, I suppose I should probably get rid of that spy. Since we're not flying online. Uh, blink. There you go. So the aircraft is managing everything now. Uh, throttle, our vertical speed, uh, and our heading, our lateral. And it's just going to fly this lovely route. Um, now, let's put some interesting stuff on here. Let's have weather on there. Yeah, weather's fine. Um, and let's put some data on there so we get our ETAs. And I guess we don't need that one. So that's our vertical flight profile. So climbing up quite steep initially, and then we flatten out, accelerate up, and then flatten out a little bit more, accelerate up again to our final cruise, to our top of climb, and then, then we're away. Um, I'll show you the route that uh, PFPX has given us. Uh, let me click that button. Um, the doink. So out of Toronto, Pearson there. All of that is Sid. Um, and then we fly over the uh, sort of south side, I suppose, of Montreal. Uh, information region. Out the top, uh, skirt reasonably close to uh, Greenland. We go E tops ever so slightly just for this tiny little portion here, um, which is perfectly fine. And uh, Reykjavik up here in Iceland is our emergency uh, sort of transatlantic uh, place to stop. Going across this NAT track here, uh, I don't know which track that is is can i turn that tracks on uh, i don't want to uh, track no it's not going to tell me no it's not going to tell me which track we're on but anyway we're on that track whatever that is today um come off the net track at venna bit of a kink straight over shannon over ireland uh south side of anglesey over right over the top of Lambeda, um, down through sort of Birmingham, South Birmingham way, um, between Birmingham and Gloucester, I suppose, uh, and then ping straight into Heathrow. Uh, got a couple of alternates. We can either go to Gatwick, um, Stansted, or Manchester if the weather's a bit bad, but not expecting any issues there at all and that's our uh, that's our cheeky little route we about six and a half hours um don't know why the eta isn't showing up on here oh well i haven't got one yet uh so that might pop up at some point down down here uh but we're not going to do the full flight recorded We'll get up to our cruise, and then when we're in cruise and the gin and tonic is flowing, I wish I haven't got any. Um, then we can, uh, then we'll just do a jump cut. Um, it'll be best part of six hours for me, for you, it'll be best part of six milliseconds. Yeah, it's lovely. So we're past our transition now, well past it, so we can go over to standard pressure. Smash in. And yeah, we're following the profile quite nicely there. And that's it, we don't need to really do anything else. So I can have our systems down on there. And probably make 
more sense having the systems on here. However, I can never figure out how to do that. Oh, no, it is that. I can never remember how you change this one versus this one. No, yeah, anyway, I'm just an idiot. Is there anything we can clicky button? Quite a lot of trim on the stabiliser there. Um, I didn't really do a good job of balancing, to be honest. I just saw wind bit in the dispatcher, stuck all the weight in the nose. Um, more or less. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, all looks good. Fuel, yeah, all looks good. Um, oh, is that where I'm now actually out of fuel in the centre tank? I think it is. So we can probably turn that off. And turn our cross feed on and balance on. Not that much needs to be balanced. But then the aircraft will just maintain balance now if it needs to. And we're on the primary generators, that's fine for the hydraulics. And we're on yeah, both generators on both engines uh, for the electrics. Happy days. Not too far from top of climb, about 70 odd miles, something like that. Already at Mach decimal 725, which is nice, 300 and something knots indicated. Uh, giving us a ground speed at the moment of 448, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there. So you can see how indicated our speed and ground, and your speed across the ground are, are very different. Um, and we've got a bit of a cross tailwind, about 28 knots resolve. That's probably uh, around about 10, 15 knots or something on the tail. Uh, 10 knots probably closer to that, which is nice, pushing us along. Hopefully the uh, transatlantic track will, will catch the jet stream and uh, speed us up a little bit. I think PFPX takes that into account anyway in the calculation. Um, distance across the air, in the air, should I say, 3,137 nautical miles. Um, so a reasonable distance and our estimated flight time I think is on here uh, is oh seven hours one minute oh sorry for estimated flight time is six hours 46 so not too bad from Canada. And that's on a cost in index of zero, so that's uh, maximum fuel efficiency as opposed to cost index of 100 or 99, um, which would be maximum time efficiency, so shortest time. Whereas we're going for the lowest fuel with a cost index of zero. And we're estimated to have, I probably can't quite read that, um, estimated to have 4.8 tonnes of fuel when we land, which is just enough to do a go around um, if we need to do that. So unless we get a much greater tailwind, higher tailwind than we anticipate, um, which will save us fuel because it's, it'll be pushing us along, um, so we'll be flying faster then we're probably not going to be able to increase our cost index too much uh, because that will reduce the amount of fuel we'll have when we get to Heathrow uh, and we need to have enough to divert or to do a go around or and to do a go around really um, but we'll see uh, we'll see how we go in the cruise I'll just keep an eye on it I've got some other bits and bobs to do so still on the SID, and we're nearly at cruise. <laughs> and the, the SID goes all the way to Lorca. Well, Lorca's the transition, so that's our transition out of the SID and onto our flight plan route. So it is, uh, they do like their long SIDs here in Canada.
compare that to the sort of UK, our synths tend to only take you to sort of four, six thousand feet, something like that, and then you're on your flight plan group on the airways. So uh, yeah, here you're on approach pretty much, or approach strip departure pretty much from uh, cruise all the way down to the ground. But that's clearly because Canada's significantly larger uh, and less sort of densely populated, I guess. So, yeah, I assume that's why they do it. I don't know, to be honest. But we've not got air traffic anyway, so it's irrelevant. So, yeah, hydraulic quantities are good, cooling's good, oxygen's good. I mean, this aircraft does everything for you, more or less, almost like the Airbuses do. Um, there's not a lot you have to do. That's a fault because there's no balancing to do. So we can turn that off. Cut your head at the right angle, see so if there's any buttons we can press that do anything interesting. But no, there aren't really. We can turn the wing and logo lights off. Don't need them anymore. No one's going to see them. Uh, so I suppose we can do some, uh, do some outside views. What outside views have I got? Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? Screenshot. Save. Link. That might well end up being the thumbnail. I love how you've got the, the sort of exhaust dirty effects here on the, on the back of the engine pile on that. Looks really cool. That's quite a nice view as well, actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's not too bad either. The other engine. Really see the flex on the wing that you get in the Dreamliner. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, that's my favourite view. I, I love that. Well, it's a, it's a toss up between that one and that one, I suppose. Well, that one's pretty good, you just can't quite see where you're going. For that one, you get a better view of where you're going, but slightly less impressive. Almost there, flight level 350. And as soon as we get to uh, top of climb, we'll just do anything, and we're going to get to top of climb before uh, we reach the end of the sit as well. That's me mental. It's crazy, souls. Um, and we shall, yeah, then skip forwards to the uh, landing. Well, descent, I should say. At this point, the passengers would be free to walk around and uh, have a wee, get their meals and all that sort of jazz. Although there's no huge rush, because it's a reasonably lengthy flight. Quite a nice view as well. I like that. Better if I had some reasonable scenery here. Oh, I was going to up the uh, scenery draw distance. Oh, no. I've got to do that. So lots of little cumulus clouds, some stratus in there as well from those guys who have uh, been doing the meteorology stuff with me in the Air Cadets. So hopefully you recognise that. Uh, no cirrus. It's all clear up and above. Oh yeah, it's all stratus and uh, cumulus, stratocumulus really, but yeah. For those of you who have seen the uh, that playlist, have a look on my channel, that's the uh, RAF Air Cadets um, Pilot Nav and Air, Air Nav uh, combined playlist as it were, 
I think I've done one video on some meteorology where we have a bit of a fly around in a, a Eurofighter out of, I think we went out of Coningsby, can't quite remember now. And uh, yeah, I set up various artificial cloud layers uh, and we fly through them and see what the different clouds look like. It sort of worked um, as much as you can get away with in FSX. That ping pong means we've got a thousand feet to go to up our uh, programmed altitude, which is actually our cruise of three nine, uh, flight level three nine zero. And then we'll see our rate of climb reduce. We'll accelerate up to our cruise, uh, which we're pretty much at anyway, Mach decimal eight, there or thereabouts. So that means the engines will come back a bit. Which they have done. And you can see the throttles coming back there. And yeah, quite a tasty uh, tailwind there actually. Not completely on the tail, but not far off, 56 knots. Um, and you can see how much that changes our, uh, how, how our true airspeed, so our speed through the air, versus our grain speed, which is more or less that plus that equals that, more or less. Bit of trigonometry goes into it. Um, but uh, yeah, so even though we're actually only flying through the air at 477 knots, we're actually traveling over the ground, which is what we care about, uh, considerably faster. And then have a look as well how that differs from our what's called our indicated airspeed. So that's what the aircraft reads from the sensor on the nose, the pitot sensor. So that is our dynamic pressure, uh, our airspeed calculated from the dynamic pressure. But because we're really high up, the static pressure is considerably lower because the air is thinner. So the static pressure is the air pressure if you're completely stationary in the air. The dynamic pressure is the pressure of the wind hitting the nose of the aircraft loosely. And because there are fewer air molecules this high up, then the sensor reads low. So it's currently reading that we're actually only doing 263 knots. But if you compensate for the fact that we're higher up and the air's less dense, Realistically, we're actually doing 482 knots. Uh, and this gives us a Mach of 0.83, something like that. Decimal 83. There or thereabouts. Well, there we go. We're up, up, and away. You can see the progress bar along the top. A long, long way to go. We'll probably be around about here ish, I would imagine, um, the next time you see me, which will be in a few moments' time. See you then. Oh, we are back, we are back. Oh, where are we? That's uh, I'll do a touch more. No, oh, that did absolutely nothing. Never mind. All the games. So, I can see Blighty. I can see Blighty. We are actually currently over Ireland. Uh, literally just over the uh, west coast. Uh, northwest coast. I will show you some um, maparoos in a minute, and um, we've gone online as well. So let's get some of that going. There you go. So you've got that spy up there in the corner. Uh, really, that needs to be nudged over. I don't know why that's moved. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Well. Oh yeah, that's better. Right, uh, so yes, we have 162 miles to top a drop. Uh, so you can see where we are with this uh, orange thing up here. I know that's hard to see, but hopefully you can see the outline of the uh, the UK and Ireland there. Um, <clears throat> and we do have some control on. Uh, it's probably going to be easier if I look at V-Pilot. Uh, so we've got London. Oh, my stripes. Right, we've got London everything on. 
which is quite nice. Um, so, yeah, we're probably going to be on London North first. Uh, or maybe, no, no, we'll probably be on London West actually. Well, we'll see who uh, who sends us a contact me anyway. Uh, but in terms of fuel, I, I upped the cost index a smidge and uh, increased our speed a touch as well. And we're still going to land with probably 10 tons of fuel. Uh, so plenty for a go around strip divert if we need it. Excuse me. Hey, caramba. Um, so we can get that up on there. Uh, are we ahead of time? Yeah, I think we probably are a little bit actually. In fact, yeah, we absolutely are. Um, we're about 40 minutes ahead of time, 42 minutes I think actually, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and here we are, still going strong. Uh, I increased our cruise altitude as well a smidge um, because uh, the optimum cruise altitude actually increased a touch. Uh, where is it? Um, yeah, so the optimum went up to 410. We were at 390, so I went up to 410. I have to be at an odd flight level. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're tanking it. Got a reasonable speed going. Not not quite as fast as we were earlier on. The wind has, uh, has swung. Uh, and it's a bit of a headwind now, unfortunately, but thankfully not much of a headwind. Um, that must have happened fairly recently, actually, since we got to the UK, because we had a tailwind all the way across uh, the Atlantic. Hmm. So yeah, we can do some uh, sort of descent planning. So I need to uh, pull up Plan G and remind myself what our expected arrival is going to be. Uh, it was the bit but 1H. Right, these have all changed since I last looked. So, open charts list. Fit but. Oh, fit bow, one hotel. One fit bow, and we go down towards Westcott-ish, and then down towards Bovingdon. Oh, okay, right, well, that's fine then. Um, thankfully, the approaches into uh, London are normally reasonably, uh, reasonably easy. Let's so leave these things go anyway. Um, so yeah, not not much to report. I've probably jumped in a smidge early, but uh, have we got Heathrow? Oh, we've got Heathrow Atis on as well. Arrival runway is two seven right. Oh, well, that's good for us. That's what we want. Transition is flight level seven five. So there are a few little bits and bobs we can key in. Uh, so we can go to our init ref and we can do our approach type stuff. Um, Hang on, it's not in there, is it? Uh, it's in this one. Transition is 7500. Doink, that's the one I always forget to do. And in here then, oh, did I not actually initialize the flight? Whoops. Uh, we can go to landing. So we know we're going to be on 27 right. The conditions at the moment are... Fine, so the runway should be dry. Current winds 230 at 11. 230. Oh, come on, this thing's so clunky. What? 230 stroke 1 1. Thank you. Outside air temperature is. 14 degrees. Seems a bit warm. 
uh, 2.6, that's nice, and Q&H is 9999. Um, it's a full cap 3, flat config will be full, uh, anti-ice we won't need, reverse will be no credit, spoilers will be auto, and brakes will do auto brake 1, because uh, we want to come off at terminal 5. Um, and then our landing weight, so if we have a look-see on here and look at progress, so we're going to land with about 10 tonnes of fuel, give or take a smidge, um, and if we have a look at this, our zero fuel weight was 151.4, so add 10 tonnes onto that, 161.4, 161.4. See why why did it do that? One six one four zero zero. Thank you. V ref add what's the wind? Eleven knots. We'll just add five then, that'll be absolutely fine. Uh auto break one, uh we will need eight thousand feet to stop, but we've got twelve thousand twelve thousand eight hundred feet, so that's good for coming off at terminal five. Um, so I'm absolutely happy with that, and we'll send that to the FMC. And we'll accept that. So all we need now is our actual clearance. Um, we know it's going to be 27 right, we know we're going to have a Bovingdon transition probably isn't on there. Oh yes it is, sorry, BNN. Yeah, BNN. And we know we're going to be on, because there's no other options, the Fit One Hotel. So we can X that. Uh, and then we can have a look at the plan. So if we go to destination, and we zoom in a smidge on here, so Bovingdon, and then we'll probably get vectors, but just to uh, make it a little bit easier, we'll do that, which will just join the line. Uh, but yeah, we almost certainly will get vectors anyway. Uh, but failing that, we want initial approach. Uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Initial approach from Bovingdon. Oh, it is actually that. That is bonkers. Okay, well, that's fine. Um... So our VNAV. Hey. See, I don't know. Ah, here we go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's got all our speed restrictions in there. Like, so that that's okay. That's quite nice. Um, so yeah, we don't actually have to worry about any of that because it's, uh, it's done it all for us. Oh, happy days. Um, so I'm going to pin that chart. Just bear with me a sec while I pin some charts. Uh, approach is going to be... Uh, oh, let's do seven right. Um, so we're going to be cat three. So our decision will be 50 feet. Well, that's nice and easy then. Uh, 50 feet radio, that is. So we're looking down here where it says radio. Um, make sure it's on radio. And then plane's 50. 50 feet is our... What's it? Uh, we can go over to hexapascals now as well. <laughs> Now we're out 
of uh, America, North America, should I say? Why is the flight director turned off? Uh, weirdly, in cruise, the flaps randomly came down. Uh, I just noticed an overspeed warning uh, just on my other screen when I was doing some other bits and bobs. Um, no idea. Very weird. Um, so we can come off that now and we can zoom out a little bit. So, yeah, looking reasonable at the moment, looking very reasonable. Uh, it is going to get busy, so we'll see how long it is before I get fed up with uh, the busyness of that sim. It should, hopefully it should be fine. coming over the east coast of Ireland now so if I spin round we should be able to see uh, Anglesey over there Anglesey traffic has actually died down a little bit it was really bad about an hour ago. I mean, it is still busy, like, but um, it shouldn't be too, too bad. If I look at Heathrow, so we're due in at 1803 Zulu. We've got one coming in from Jib, 1800. One coming in from Leipzig, 18.02, and one coming in from Barcelona at 18.05. They're the only ones immediately adjacent to us. And then there's one from Geneva at 18.12. We should be back before then. And a the chappy coming in from Manchester, but he's going to be in quarter of an hour before us. So actually, although it is going to be busy, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I'm not expecting to need to hold, I hope. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, London West I'm expecting, but we might... I don't know. I'm, uh, I can never quite remember the Vatsim area sectors nor be bothered to look it up. Cause it's all it's all changed again. There's London Control M M C M W N. Not sure if any of those are actually on the sectors map. Well, before I say that, let's have a quick look. Uh, and let's pull that up so you guys can see it. Um, so London West. Oh, no. We, uh, yeah, we're going to be pretty much on this border, but I think... Oh, Lipgo. Yeah, so no, we're on London West. Um... So oh, LTC we can ignore. Hmm. Really confusing. Uh, what's Lundy then? Oh, Daventry. Oh, right. So we won't be doing that. Um. Yeah, so I would expect London West to be giving us a shout then, so so I was right then, in fairness. Uh, 
there. Um, and we've just passed Lipgo. So we now are actually in London West, and we've not had a contact me. They're on 126075, so let's anticipate it. 126075. Now, can I flip flop that? Why can't I flip flop that? It just absolutely point blank refusing to let me do that. There's nothing on that. London West one two six zero seven five. It's there. So why can't I flip flop? I'll do it through Vpilot. Yeah, that's just refusing to work. I don't I don't understand why. So slightly confused is why I can't hear anything. Microphone. Yeah, people it's set up all alright. And I did hear some squawky stuff as well. Oh, what ifs? So that's our top of drop. Um, let me just give you your map back. So, well, let's just crack on. Down to 1800 by Fitbo. Yeah, my V pilot's gone completely balky. It's not letting me transmit either. Right, well, easy solution to that. Problem solved. <laughs> uh, so there's not much point in me having that spy up now, is there? There we go. Right, well, that's that problem solved anyway. Um. Which makes things a bit easier, I suppose, anyway. Uh, I don't know why V-Pilot just was refusing to work. Very strange. So we're all keyed in. Um, the aircraft is descending now. Uh, it's calculating the best descent to get down to uh, flight level 180 by Fitbo. Uh, and this thing plummets like a lead balloon. 
and we're coming up sort of towards uh, Lambeda. No, over Wales. Uh, we'll have Snowdon will be over there behind the clouds. In fact, that's probably Snowdon there on the uh, left wing tip, or at least there or thereabouts. Somewhere around there in the clouds anyway. It's, it's this sort of area, Snowdon. So it's one of them. Nice. <coughs> There's Aberystwyth down there, somewhere, as well. Probably around right about there, I think. Just kicks in, maybe a bit further up. And the progress bar, it's nearly there. See if we can actually get on the deck without uh, it crashing. See, the flight director's turned off again. Why do you keep turning off? Turn on, turn on, turn on. What? What's going on with this? Something's completely balked out. Turn on. I'm on the flight director. Stuff you. Oh, you. Well, okay. We're flying without a flight director then, clearly. Um, we will put our marker beacons on. Which is that one? That onto there. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. It's like a useless box. It keeps <laughs> turning itself back off again, and I have no idea why. Co pilot's fine. Oh, we might just have to land it from his seat then. Mind you, I shouldn't really need the flight director. It's very helpful, but. It's not the end of the world, not having it. Um, flick some lights on, why the devil not? And we'll give the cabin crew a ping pong. For no other reason than because we can. Probably about... 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, the wheel's on the floor. Pretty close. Uh, reckons 18.05 Zulu. We're currently 18. Sorry, 17.47. Um, but the sim time and the um, real world time aren't quite aligned. So I don't think it'll be 15 minutes. these things it does make a bit of a difference. I don't think there is sun shield up there, no there isn't. So yeah we're good we're good on fuel we're descending nicely no problems we're gonna absolutely hit uh, fit bow at the right altitude uh, speed is slowly coming back our true air speed is coming back obviously the indicated sort of starts increasing um, and then starts coming back again but it's the true air speed we really care about um, <coughs> for the moment at least anyway Um, and we can go over to our descent checklist, I suppose. So recall 
is checked, no notes, auto break will be auto break 1, landing data is done and in, in fact so let's probably just check that, uh, index, let's go to approach, yeah vref 140, so that's fine, uh, and the approach briefing will be shortly. Yeah, we'll wait for him to do the approach briefing. ILS, yeah, we've got some numbers in there, so that should automatically sort itself out. Ace. 10.2 tonnes when we land. Which is pretty good. Always good to land with a bit more fuel than uh, you expected. Uh, so yeah, the weather at um, Gatwick is at uh, Heathrow even, is absolutely fine, so I'm not expecting to need to divert, there's no fog and no chance of fog, because the dew point is quite a long way off the um, outside air temperature, and visibility is good, there, there were no um, sigmats out, no uh, significant meteorological conditions, to worry about, so um, yeah, it should be a very straightforward landing. Tiny bit of a crosswind um, from the left, so yeah, but uh, not gusting, so you know, reasonably sensible conditions. Will you let me have my flight director yet? Yeah? No. I don't know how you change the zoom on that, I'm not sure if you can. Uh, you probably can somewhere, it'll be one of these little dials hidden away, but um, I have no idea which one. And I'm not that bothered because we've got it on here. It would be nice to zoom that in a touch. 17 miles to Fitbo on the, uh, it's not DME, but it's GPS because it's a waypoint. We're almost down now, it's uh, flight level 180, we're, we're getting there, so yeah, all good. And then down to our in, down to 7,000, then next by Bovingdon. Uh, and I think it's then 3,500 is our ILS intercept. Can't quite see it and all that. It'll become clear when we uh, zoom in a bit. Um, but we're pretty much coming on to the charts now. So let's show you some chartage. So we're just about to come on to the chart. Here's Fitbo flight at flight level 180. So that's why the line is above and below it. it means you've got to be sandwiched uh, at that. So pit at 150. And then Bovingdon at flight level seven zero. So very, um, there's no at or aboves or anything like that, or at or belows. Uh, we have to be at that exact altitude. And then from there, from Bovingdon, we then do this horrendous right hand turn onto two seven right, pick up the ILS. Uh, let me just check that was at three thousand feet. Or above three and a half down to three thousand there um and then we in, actually we intercept at two thousand five hundred cat three so fifty uh fifty foot we could do cat three b but we'll probably be flying it by hand by that point um 
Oh, because we'll be visual. Two seven zeros. They're heading for the ILS, uh, and then we'll be coming off uh, for Terminal Five. Uh, let's say I pin that one, and then and then Terminal Five. Uh, yeah, so we're coming in two seven. Um, be nice to come off right at the end, but we'll probably end up coming off at uh, Alpha Ten Echo or something. Um, but uh, yeah, we haven't really got any other traffic to worry about, so I'm probably just going to, uh, you know, let it roll, come off at Alpha Bra Alpha Twelve, uh, and then straight into Terminal Five to park. Um, so. We need to get down to flight level seven zero. Message says unable to maintain extend speed brakes. I ah, call cool BS. We're fine. He's absolutely fine. Um, and we're coming up on flight level 100. Oh no, we're not. Still 170. So lights don't need to come on just yet. Now, what's it waiting for? up before didn't I and it told you what they were waiting for to uh... there we go uh, and it told you yeah it told you what the co-pilot was waiting for to, to do the to do the thing Then. It's not that, it's clearly none of them. Ah, uh, he is, sorry. definitely do it before but I can't remember what so we're well on our way on the set now uh, so much so can probably look at the terminal charts EGLL Right, 
Mm. Oh, fit mode's not even on there. That's the best we can do then in that case. Um, so we've got clearance, got localizer and stuff. Yeah, cool. I wish it was dark though. I wish it was white on black rather than um, black on white. But anyway. So, Pit, we want to be at fly level 150. We're pretty much there. Near enough. And then Bovingdon at flight level 7. Zero. So, right, so that's interesting because the ATIS said transition was at 7,500, but the charts are saying flight level 70 at Bovingdon. Well, you can't be at flight level 70 if you've transitioned, you'd be at 7,500. So, I get confused sometimes what the what London Control do on that set when it comes to that sort of stuff. Um, it just doesn't make sense when you're looking at the chart and it's giving you different information to what the vaccine controllers are giving you. But maybe maybe my chart's out of date with Navigraph. Could be. Or maybe they're out of date, or it was an old ATIS generation message or something like that. I don't know. Not a clue. I mean, no, no. So I thought actually we'd be going a bit quicker than we are, but we're, we're not. Uh, we're just pretty much level with Oxford, slap bang between Oxford and Coventry at the moment. So there's, that's Oxford down there, and then on the left wing should be Coventry somewhere. So probably that up there, on the left wing tip, I think that's Coventry. Might be the bigger one up there on the wing tip now, I'm not too sure. Uh, but that certainly looks like Oxford down there, with the river going through it. And we're going to do a bit of a wiggler wiggler roo now. We're going to do a, a bit of a right turn, followed by a bit of a left, uh, to take us in towards Bovingdon. Uh, and Bovingdon is sort of roughly around here, I think. Probably a bit further on, actually. So we're doing a right turn. Where's the river? There's the right turn. Just using the uh, high speed ailerons there. Uh, zoom in a bit when it rolls out. Doesn't use the full ailerons because you get a load of adverse yaw, so it's just using these two, that, that one and that one, it's all it needs. Just reduces the adverse roll and uh, reduces the impact of lift when you suddenly stick your ailerons up and it dumps the lift on the wing. I think Bovington is sort of here ish. Coming in towards Westcott, Westcott's more or less around here. Uh, so we're getting pretty close in now. Just keeping my eye on the charts. So we want to be at flight level 70 at Bovingdon. So that's a bit of a steeper descent now, as you can see on the uh, on the vertical profile. So that's why the engines are pretty ramp much ramped back to idle. Uh, descent rate has gone quite high. Our speed's still pretty good. Um, we can stay, you know, on a reasonable speed until we get to flight level 100, and then we're limited to 250 knots. 
So overhead Westcott now, here's the left turn. And then yeah, Bovingdon's around about here somewhere. And we can see Bovingdon here on the uh, ND, on the navigation display. So close enough for me to flight level 100, so we'll stick the lights on. So as soon as we cro actually cross flight level 100, the speed will uh, need to pull pull right back, and it has done there. You can see the little pink dial. That's the speed it's going to try and achieve. So the nose is coming up to allow the speed to bleed off. We've got a we've got a bit of distance, so you can see it's deviating from the path to get the speed back. Once you've got the speed under control, then you can worry about your altitude. Um, much easier to deal with altitude if your speed is right it's very hard to deal with speed um, if you're too low Bit spoilers just to help it slow down a bit. Hello, cat. Wish the same one cut out each time I do that. So annoying. Yeah, yes, I know you want your dinner, so do I. So we're almost at Bovingdon now, so I'm just going to flip to the initial approach chart. There we go. And then we need to be all the way down to 2,500. You would normally do this in steps, but because I know it's all the restrictions are all keyed in properly into the FMS, um, I'm happy to just clear us down to two and a half thousand, and then let the uh, computer take care of the the constraints. So I'm thinking of not using auto brake at all, to be honest. But. So seven and a half thousand. So we'll uh, come off standard, and uh, well, what was the weather? I've already forgotten. QNH one zero two zero. I think it was one zero one four, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It was one zero two zero. I remember saying, "Oh, that's high." 1020 there, then in the QNH. And then we've got this hawky balky mess. That's if we needed to do a hold, um, we would hold here. But uh, we're not going to need to do that because we've dropped offline. So. There it is. And we see the landing lights as well there. Engine's nicely spooled back now, that's good. Wow, that's not. <laughs> Come on, FSX, load in the textures. It's clearly just done a uh, garbage cleaner while it's uh, trying to load in London. Uh, 
well, while it thinks about that, yeah, no, it's um, it always does garbage cleanup when you least want it to do it. Because we're actually deviating slightly off course, and I want to correct for that. And minimize it. And open it again. Is that going to help? Nope. Because there's a lot of uh, cloud as well. So why are we not descending? Heading. Although that's right on the FMS, it's not showing properly on the charts. So I'm going to uh, do heading select. More spoilers again, just to allow that speed to come back because it's running away from us a bit there. It's because we've got such a high descent rate, let's rest that a little bit. Have my flight director yet? No. Once below 250, I can uh, put the spoilers down. Uh, sorry, put the slats down uh, and that will help. Just bring us back on course. Yeah, I'm going to leave the hood up because um, it's just extra things for it to load in. I don't necessarily want. So altimeters are done. Um, that's the approach checklist. And then the landing checklist. Speed right there. Yeah, that's fine. Some why our speed's not coming back. That is starting to think about it now. Take flat one, that will help bring the speed back anyway. Take flat two. The speed's coming back nicely now. So arm approach, and we 
can now descend down to two and a half thousand. We seem to have just punched straight through the ILS. Not entirely sure why. ILS is keyed in, approach is armed, do I need to arm the localizer as well? No. It's going to be a pain in the ass. Wondering if it's because the um, flight director's gone nuts. So now it would be good to have the uh, flight director. Oh, that's a bit low, isn't it? So speed brake is armed, flaps are good, altitude's absolutely abysmal. That's because the autopilot went nuts on me. Just arrest this descent a touch. There we go. Because look, we're, the the ILS is keyed in, but it, we're not getting any of it. See, this is why I like the Aerosoft Airbus because it just works. Everything's keyed in. Every, I've done everything right. It's just not working. And when you've just done a six and a half hour flight, seven hour flight or whatever, it's really irritating. Yeah, we're fine. Gave the passengers a bit of a scenic tour, that's all. Yeah, the ILS clearly just isn't working in this aircraft. Maybe it's linked to this flight director just turning itself off. I think that's just hilarious. But well, one click, move the mouse away, it turns itself off. Brilliant. Because we're a bit low, we'll come in with a bit more engine on than I would like, but uh, we're all right. In fact, we're back on now. Let's watch that crosswind, just pushing us left to right. This will be absolutely fine. And 
will take manual brakes, reverses away, and will keep us rolling. There's Alpha 11 just past, here's Terminal 5 up on the left. And here's Alpha 12. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be passing for the next few minutes. So please show your seatbelt fasten until the passenger turns off the fasten seatbelt sign. At that time, please remember to check around your seating area in the seat pockets and overhead bins for all personal belongings that you brought up for. Please take care when opening the overhead bins as the contents will shortly be driven. So lights off. Strobes off. And transponder to receive only. I don't actually know where the uh, Dreamliner is parked, but I'm, I'm going to park in my usual spot. Turn for my usual spot, never mind. Taxiing is at usual standards. No flaps coming up. And we can do the. Uh, in fact, no, we don't need to do the shutdown checklist yet. And I guess we'll take this one here. There are no markings, no there aren't. Okay, well, taxi light can come off. Yeah, I think this is where the Airbus parks. These gates look a bit close together for a Dreamliner. <laughs> parking spot for a dreamline at the moment. It's fine. So we'll get the jetway attached. Parking brake can come on. The APU's on so we can do some of that. We can connect the external power and flick straight over onto that. We can put some doors open, we can do some of that, we can make the brightness maximum <clears throat> and just wait for the uh, getway. Still thinking about it, we didn't really uh, help it out too much in fairness. So that's almost there. APU can come off now. Beacon and nav lights can come off. And we're pretty much ready for a, a turnaround now. Transponder can come off now. There we are, perfectly parked at the wrong stand. <laughs> Jetway <laughs> didn't have a chance in hell. And there we are down at Heathrow. And the scenery fixes worked, as you can see from that video, uh, which is nice. And uh, it didn't crash. 
got down to half a gig of VAS, which is a, a bit twitchy, but um, yeah, not too bad. Don't know what happened with vPilot. I had all the intentions of doing the landing online, but it crapped out. So uh, that wasn't an option, unfortunately. Um, that's quite a nice view, isn't it? Um, I want, I want engine. Oh, the jetway is probably above us. Uh, but yeah, that's a screenshot as well. Like that. I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know if you did. Let me know if you like these, uh, the long haul ones, the sort of split stream type things. I'll happily do more. Uh, or if you prefer the sort of shorter hops, you know, um, Heathrow to Manchester and, and those sorts of things. Let me know what you think of the Dreamliner um, and my horrendous attempts at flying the thing. Uh, whether you prefer me to fly something else. Um, I probably prefer to fly something else. I need to do some more Dash 8 soon. So we'll get the Crash 8 out again soon. Um, maybe do some hops Manchester to Southampton or something. Um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing you then.